Hi, Liu. Welcome to iRadio. Thank you for having me, Priska, at iRadio. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, we're going to talk about bride price. Um, this is an area that that has been affecting people. It has been affecting so many people in the community, and we want to discuss about it. But briefly, you can share your experience with us and opinion on high bride price in South Sudan. Um, bride price is a very, I think, controversial topic, especially among South Sudanese, because bride price is such an integral part of our culture. It's incredibly important um, aspects of our social lives, like it pretty much defines the rest of our life. Um, it's, it's a process that involves so many people and that um, really uh, looks at cultural items of significance. So for example, for pastoralists, like Nilotic tribes, they may utilize cows. Other tribes may utilize um, money, uh, jewelry, spears, pottery, different kind of um, cultural items. So bride price is something incredibly important. Okay. So, um, so bride price is a mainstay of South Sudanese culture and it differs from culture to culture. But as with many different practices, it may come with problems. And one of the problems that we are seeing is um, that bride price um, is causing. So bride price is really a way for us to legitimize marriages in our cultures and communities. Whereas in Western cultures, they'll use um, church wedding and rings to, sig signif to, s to signify mm -hmm. marriage whereas we will use a uh, bride price to do so. Um, from my own experience, um, if I get married uh, within my own community in South Sudan, I'm expected to follow the same procedure of um, my family negotiating with my prospective husband's family on the bride price. And they're the ones who make the decision. And if it's agreed upon, then that's the price that they will pay. So it's, it's a requirement. It's not something that I can escape from if I get married. Um, to someone from my own community. And um, from my own other experience, I've witnessed uh, what, it, what it has done. Um, for some individuals, they got married to individuals that they didn't want to get married to because of bride price. Um, in some cases, um, people had to elope because they couldn't afford bride price. So these are the kind of things that I've actually witnessed. Right, how is it uh, threatening peace building in our communities in South Sudan. Bride price um, has such a big impact on community. As I described before, it's such an integral part of our community and it's something that you need in order to progress in life. So therefore, if you have a high bride price, um, individuals will feel like they have to do what they can to get their hands on um, enough cows. So for pastoralist communities, um, there's a high incidence of cattle raiding because that's the you know, the quickest and, and, and biggest way to get a really big number of herd of cattle um, in a very short time in order for you to be able to get married. So it, it threatens peace building because it drives um, cattle raids and that in turn um, causes displacement of people. It also causes um, continuous communal violence, so it's a cycle, so there will be revenge attacks. Uh, one community will go back to another community and you know, it's just a whole cycle. It also causes, um, it makes life very difficult for people. People are not able to cultivate. People are not able to move freely because of insecurity. And um, actually a, um, a study by Yale University and uh, another university in Texas in 2017 found that high bride price predisposes men um, in South Sudanese community to um, be more likely to get together to create violent groups so you'll have like violent groups um, who are continuously trying to uh, cattle raid so in order for them to generate more wealth for themselves. Right, what is the impact on women? How does bride price infringe on women's rights? Uh, bride price, it really, it, it does it in a few ways. Um, one of the ways is that, um, one of the s uh, kind of straightforward ways is forced marriages. So um, women and even girls will be forced to marry someone because um, they'll pay a certain amount of bride price or because they are wealthy in general. And then also another 
um, cause is that you know girls may have their own boyfriend or love interest that they want to be with but they cannot marry that individual because that person cannot pay so they have to um, that person has to give up uh, the, the fight um, to marry this um, girl so it really affects girls because um, South Sudan for example has the sixth highest child marriage rates um, in the world according to a 2017 um, report by UNICEF because you know if a family is undergoing poverty and um, they have too many mouths to feed and they want to relieve themselves from poverty or they have sons who need to get married but there are no cattle they will marry the daughters of as soon as they can or against their will at any uh, kind of age so that's the impact of um, high bride price on girls and women. Right. Um, many young men are affected by high bride price in different parts of the country, and also as many young girls do, um, especially with education. You find a 13-year-old girl is married off because the, f the father wants to get wealth. What is your word of encouragement to young girls in South Sudan? And what, do, what can you advise them to do when they are faced with issues of high bride price or early and forced marriage because they, their, their parents need cows? This is a really difficult um, situation because the issue of bride price is controlled by men and controlled by the elders. So you have some communities where they're very lenient, like in northern Barakazala, will communities are a little bit more lenient with regards to bride price. Then you have other communities in Barakazala that are more extreme in terms of bride price and and one of the challenges with that is that even if you empower a girl and empower a woman um, to stand up for what she believes in and to stand up for what she thinks is right it's very difficult because this is a decision that's held in the hands of elders um, if you are fortunate enough to have parents who um, are understanding and, and accepting of the situation of your future husband then that makes the situation a bit easier. So what I would say is that girls and women, if they can find allies within their families in such a situation, to find allies within their families, particularly male allies who may have influence because that can also help the process. I also think um, if girls can find support group, if they can find a mentor, if they can find someone of some kind of influence who can um, either support them um, for example with education because in some cases parents will stop supporting someone with education so they can and um, get education that way they'll be sponsored or they can also um, have someone influence their parents or their relatives to uh, make a more informed and better choices I think in this case it's something that requires so many layers of um, intervention for bright price to be controlled and also for girls to be empowered. But it's something that will take time. But at least if girls try their best to find allies within their own fam, that's something that they can do. And then also um, finding support, because there are many women out there who have managed to make it, who've managed to leave forced marriages, who've managed to overcome these issues of forced marriages, who may be able to advise or may be able to help. Anything else you'd want to say? Yeah, anything else I want to add? Yes. I feel that in order for South Sudan to progress, um, you know, we have our cultural uh, values that um, we care about and we cherish so much. And I don't think that it's something that, you know, we should discard. But I think we should review um, aspects of our culture that may be damaging, uh, particularly to women, because we're quite a patri patriarchal society. So we may all want to review aspects of our culture and see how we can adjust it for modern times. because. Things like high bride price has a major impact on the country in terms of insecurity. Also, the economy is really bad, so you have a situation where young men cannot get married to women of their choice, and then you have the issue of forced marriages. So it's something that I really urge for everyone to look into, and we have to work together. And the government also has to work with all of us on this issue, be clear with their laws, um, try and implement them more, because we have to put together the... the the land, the law of the land, as well as customary law, and so we have to find a way of, you know, utilizing both of them to everyone's advantage, to everyone's benefit, and not just the benefit of the few. Thank you for coming to Aida, and thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for having me.